Welcome to Georgia Solar Installers. Today's topic is feed in tariffs versus net meterings and which one should you help your customer choose when doing a renewable project. To make the right choice, you have to look at the bill. You have to understand how the customer is actually being billed a kilowatt hour. We're going to explore the Georgia Power Company's rate plan PLL8, which is large commercial, and here is an example of that bill. Basically, what we want to know is what are our expected savings if we were to do a feed-in tariff or if we were to do net metering. Our expected savings aren't based on a flat rate. We got tiered billing, which means that we need to know which KWHs we are saving on these particular projects. Now, here's an example of our tier billing right here on PLL8. Here's a bigger example that I kind of blow it up for you. And then what we want to see is rates are tied to demand. So it goes all the way from 12.53 cents all the way down to three quarters of a penny or 0.72 cents in our particular bucket. So now what we want to do is take a look at an actual bill. And here's an actual bill from our particular customer that we have here. So typically when customers are trying to figure out their savings, they'll take their total monthly bill and divide it by their kilowatt hours. And, and they think that that's the price per kilowatt hour that they're going to be saving. So in this particular case, 38,775 divided by 416,000 kilowatt hours comes out to 9.3 cents per kilowatt hours. But is that our actual savings on a renewable project on anything that we would save by sending energy either into the plant or on a feed-in tariff? Well, the first thing to look at is there's some non-regulatory charges on there as well, such as taxes, maybe the nuclear charge here in Georgia. So our effective KWH rate is actually 8.17 in this particular example. Now, based on the tier demand, we run anywhere from 12.3 cents all the way down to 9 cents per kilowatt hour. Okay, we have to help our plant managers make the decision between net metering and feed-in tariffs. And because right now, they currently think they're paying 9.3 cents per kilowatt hour on this particular rate plan. But this rate plan is tied to demand. So we actually have four different buckets of rates here. And the way it works is uh, for each 200 hours... Uh, times the billing demand, it creates a new bucket. So we take our billing demand, which is KW, times our hours, and that gives us the number of KWHs that fall into a bucket. So as an example, if we had a billing demand of 1,000, 1,000 KW times 200 hours, that would be 200,000 kilowatt hours in that particular bucket. So our first set of bucket uh, would be 200,000 kilowatt hours, the next bucket 200, the next bucket 200,000, and the next bucket 200,000. So our rate for the first bucket actually has sub-buckets in it. So it runs from 12.53 cents per kilowatt hours down to 7.4 cents per kilowatt hour. But look what happens as soon as we jump over 200 kilowatt hours and we go into the next bucket. All of a sudden we're down to a penny, 1.2 cents a kilowatt hour. Then we drop below a penny to 0.9. Then we drop even further to 0.7 or three quarters of a penny uh, for the final bucket here. So basically we have over 600,000 uh, kilowatt hours in the lower penny bucket and it's not until we get uh, our demand and our kilowatt hours get below 200,000 that we actually are in expensive uh, rates. So essentially what happens is as our demand drops our effective rate goes up and the reason why this happens is when our demand drops the number of kilowatt hours in each tier drops as well but what happens is our bottom uh, bucket is what drops first so we lose our 0.7 first and then the next 200,000 kilowatt hours if we were able to save those we drop the 0.9 and if we were able to save another 200 kilowatt hours we would actually save the 1.2 cents per kilowatt hours and finally if we were to save our final to get into our final 200 kilowatt hours 200,000 kilowatt hours that is we would get into our rate of 7 cents so a little over 7 cents so the point is that the bottom tier tiers drop off first before the top tiers. So I essentially want to show an explanation. As you lower the demand, you get less cheap energy. So you start dropping off the one cents and not the higher rates. And here's an actual example that I did for uh, uh, this particular bill. And uh, here's my buckets and my kilowatt hours in each bucket and the cost per uh, each bucket, in which ends up effective rates. And I have two different scenarios going on here 
One is the uh, current rate, and the other one is if I save uh, 500 kW in demand. So what I wanted to know on my monthly uh, bill, what happens if I do save 500 uh, kW in demand? So this is a, an, an actual case study of that bill that we just uh, looked at a second ago. And so essentially what happens is, is that the 500 kW in demand drops our rate from 9.3 cents to 5.9 cents, giving us a 3.4 cent savings. So uh, we actually are saving on our net metering here uh, a total of 3.4 cents in this particular case. Now, if the net metering, if I save 3.4 cents and my total kilowatt hours of that demand is uh, 124,729, then my savings is $4,240. So my 3.4 cents times my kilowatt hours gives me a net metering savings of $4,240. Uh, but my feed-in tariff is actually 13 cents here in Georgia. So if my feed-in tariff is 13 cents times the same kilowatt hours, then all of a sudden that's a $16,000 saving, 16214 so if I sell everything to the web um, to the uh, grid instead of using it, I save sixteen thousand versus the four thousand a month from the net metering. So this isn't even close. The feed-in tariff of thirteen cents is a lot better than the net metering of the uh, three point four cents on this particular project. It isn't even close. So again, our job is to help the. Uh, the manager determine should it be feed in tariff or net metering and you won't know unless you go and check out the bill so study the bill to make an actual determination for the uh, plant manager please visit us at www.georgiasolarinstallers.com